Hello guys and gals and a long time no see. I don't think we've done a type of video like this in quite a long time where we just talk about something in more recent news coverage type of way. Completely unscripted this time, so I'm sorry if I sound kind of out of whack, but that's how we're going to be playing this. I have, um, technically have some few notes for this uh, video, but right now I want to put the video into context because... It's going to be pseudo-controversial, because, um, apparently, from the way that I've seen people, a limited number of people talk about this, apparently it's a controversial issue, and I totally get that, but I'm going to be taking the apparently wrong stance on this. So, let's get into it. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is that Personally, I don't really give a shit about E3, so I'm not one of those people that go to all the conferences, watch all the streams, watch all the trailers. I just don't do that because I'm not really receptive to the industry-pushed hype machine type of thing that they go to. I've seen the number of times that E3 has burned people and has been incorrect, blatantly wrong, and just anti-consumer. All those times that you can remember, um, the Watch Dogs thing, um, and almost everything that was showcased with Anthem. I guess all the games that came out initially and said that there were going to be no microtransactions, no loot boxes, and then later, months later, when they thought they could get away with it, they just snuck them in. And, uh, the way that the most recent Call of Duty games had no loot boxes when the game was in review mode. And then after that time, the marketplace came in and just trashed the economy of those games. So, yeah, I've seen that and therefore I just am not receptive to the hype machine at all. I respect that you get hype for things. I do respect that. Some games can look absolutely amazing, and there's no faulting you for falling in line with something that looks good. But the thing that I would like everyone to keep in mind, if I had my ideal way about it, is, yeah, you can get hyped, but don't fall completely in love with the hype. Because there's always that chance with anything that the hype can fall through. So, long story short is that I didn't watch everything that was put on in E3. So, when I got an email from Ubisoft, the short version of why I'm on Ubisoft's email list was that, believe it or not, I actually have the physical PC version of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and, you, and when you install that, you have to run it through Uplay for obvious reasons. And occasionally, Ubisoft would come out with a deal... Or, you know, a steep discount on certain things. So I was like, whatever. I don't really... It's not hurting me that I'm on your email list. But, you know, I'm not really going to care either way. So I got an email from Ubisoft talking about Uplay Plus. And I was slightly interested through the email. And so I clicked on it. And when I was reading through the promised features for Uplay Plus, I was actually slightly hyped for the service. Again, just to put the rest of the video in context, what I'm going to be saying in support for Uplay Plus is specifically based on the promises that Ubisoft outlined for the service when it was initially revealed in this email to me and through the website. So, again, like the E3 thing, Ubisoft could renege on some of these promises. They could decide to turn and uh, burn people on it. Therefore, if that happens, I didn't know about that because this is what they're promising. There's really no way to foresee if they're going to renege on their promises or they're going to lie about things. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be working with is the promised features of Uplay+. Plus. And when I was reading through it, like I said on the title of this video, I was actually in support for the plan. Because the plan says that it's going to be $15 a month. It's going to be a download service and not a streaming service. So that it's automatically more reliable. They promise a minimum of 100 games when the service was announced. And they also promise... That the version of the game that you are getting through the service is the most premium edition that's available. 
with that promise, I'm kind of skeptical about it because they could only make those premium editions available for certain games because then they're not technically lying, but they also didn't technically say that when they revealed it. So that's the issue when I'm talking about promised features, okay? But if they stick to it and make everything available, then I'm all on board for it. Um, let me just cut the rest of this out and let me go to the actual email so I have something to talk about. Okay, so the other features of the game, sorry I cut that bit out, I was actually going through my email, is that, like I said, Premium Edition, 100 games when it's launched. Um, they're also promising that you're going to get the new releases, which is kind of obvious, especially with a service like this. You're also going to get the beta access for games when they come out. So, again, they're not promising specifically on this that everything's going to be included, but... Everything's going to be included for everything, but I think that's going to impact the um, value of the service. Like, if Ubisoft is going to dick around people on this, then obviously people are going to get fed up with the, you know, the caveats and just cancel their subscription, which is definitely fine, especially if they're going to dick people around. Which comes to one of the last features is that you can cancel any time, you're not forced into anything, you know, you're probably going to get... Uh, prorated on your, you know, semi-cancellation. They're also promising a free month in September, so um, apparently you also get some exclusive, probably the Uplay bonuses and that sort of shit. Okay, so they are promising that you will get access to the Season Pass stuff when it's applicable. See, that's the thing, the when applicable thing. Like, if they're going to start offering caveats, then that's going to be pretty fucking bullshit. Um, ooh, they're putting it on Stadia for some reason. On free trial, they're talking about the free thing. Uh, yeah, they're just saying the you'll have the most premium game edition, as such as the um, DLCs, the expansions, and automatic beta access. So it sounds really good for 15 bucks a month, in my opinion, especially since it's a download service and not a streaming service. Right now, America is where I'm from is not ready for streaming service. I completely agree with that because the infrastructure just isn't there yet to have, like, seamless, no-problem streaming. So if this was a streaming service, I would be extremely skeptical about it because there's always that question of reliability with the ISPs and whatnot. But this is a download service, so that automatically makes it better, in my opinion, just because it's more reliable. So before we get to the second part of the video that I wanted to do, I wanted to talk more about why I was in support of this. Um, one, it's $15 a month. And $15 a month is not actually that expensive because, um, I mean, this is coming from someone who actually gets the lucky opportunity to get paid weekly and actually get paid at a decent rate so that, you know, I'm not making like $150 a week and making the potential benefit completely worthless. So, to me, I mean, I can see things a bit more, um, I guess, proportionate to the month. So, when you say $15 a month, and that rounds out to about $4.50 a week, that's actually not that expensive. You know, it is comparable to a Netflix type of service. And, like I said, they're offering, like, the entire library access. There's no, like, Nintendo drip feed bullshit with this. You get a big library right at the start. And the reason that I was, and this is kind of a reason specifically the Ubisoft, was the reason that I was interested in this game was that there are times, you know, during the months where I kind of don't want to have, like, I guess a serious gaming session. What I mean by that is, like, something that I really have to focus on and something that's going to, like, take all my concentration. Sometimes I want, you know, something more of a time sink, something that's not too stressful. And Ubisoft games can definitely fill that gap for me because they take forever, but they're not actually all that demanding as long as you, you know, do everything that the game offers. Grr, the RPG elements. <laughs> so they're offering not only a lot of games, but each of those games can actually take quite a long time. So the the time sink value of the games and having, you know, a bunch of stuff to do and not having to actually pay out for the expensive um, versions of the games to try out if I like them 
and you know not having to go to Redbox and only have three days to exp- experience the game gives you know these games this big library an affordable option to you know just look at them but also not have the you know the repeat playthrough option which is good for me because I barely ever replay any of my games so that's why I'm in support of the Uplay Plus thing and it's more for personal reasons because I would use it differently than other people and especially you know when they talk about the new releases thing that means that you know you can get in and get out with a new game and not actually have to you know spend the 60 100 whatever dollars or the time spent to wait for it to come down in price which we'll be talking about later so that's why i'm in favor with it especially when they're talking about the premium editions you know you're going to get the extra content which again adds more time and it adds more value and you're getting all of this you know good sounding stuff for 15 dollars a month it's a flat rate and like i said it's a monthly cost so it's not actually that expensive Let's talk about it like this. If you get on the service and you play any game on it, just the one game that month, more more than likely you'll be recouping your cost almost immediately like that. Now, obviously there are going to be some games on the library that are so old that buying a secondhand copy is going to be around, you know, $10, $11, or maybe if it was kind of trash, maybe $5 to $7. But then you factor in, you know, taxes now on have been getting more applicable to online purchases, the shipping cost to get it to you. I mean, this is going to be, you know, pretty applicable or pretty comparable to those secondhand rates, which actually, you know, was a smart play on Ubisoft for, you know, getting people on the service. So, yeah, I'm definitely in favor. So... Uh, Let's get to the counterpoints, because one, I think they're pretty prescient. They're also kind of incorrect, especially the ones at the end, which not only is incorrect uh, when talking about this, but is also incorrect in the logic of its own, (laughs) of itself. So it's going to be kind of funny, and basically I'm going to be using these quote-unquote counterpoints to end up making the Uplay Plus thing look a lot more positive. Well, not a lot more, but it's going to make it look more positive. So, um, I'm not going to um, put the Facebook feed on here. I'm going to put up the what people have said, but I'm not going to bother censoring this because, you know, it's not really worth it. So, the first person that I talked to, I only talked to two people about this. It's not a big group, which is better for me because you get less of the bullshit through that and people just screwing around uh basically they weren't just a fan of digital which i you know i i definitely respect if you're a fan of of physical media you can go nuts i definitely have tons of cartridges and all that sort of thing so i definitely understand why you like physical there's definitely that that sort of experience and that sort of I, i guess realism when you do physical instead of digital and plus you you even though you don't technically have the game when you buy the game you feel like you have more of the game rather than just having it in code and the first thing that he said which is actually you know applicable was that he said yeah but if you wait long enough the game is going to you know come down in value so there's no reason to give ubisoft the same amount of money per month and you would own it physically we just talked about, yeah, you own it physically, but you don't actually have the whole game when you buy a game nowadays. So, first thing is that, yes, it's comparable to a one-time second-hand purchase of a game of the same game, but that's not all you're getting access to. Again, it's a library that you're getting access to. So, you you know, you download a game, you kind of don't like it, you fall out with it, get it off of your system and get a different one. There, you just fucking doubled the goddamn value of the same thing. You would have had to pay to get that second game. In this, you don't. So, it's automatically a better deal. Because what would have cost you 25 to $30 is now costing you, again, $15 a month. And let's say you, you know, you pick up, you know, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which is shorter than some of their later entries... You get through that game, get on a different one. There you go, three fucking games. So, yeah, just right there, I mean, that point doesn't make any sense when you compare it to a subscription service that access to a library. 
like if you were talking somehow you were getting subscribed on to something that only gave you like the playstation plus thing and not to knock playstation plus because that's a free bonus but it's not a drip feed of content you know you're not getting you know one two games a month you're getting access to the whole shebang right at the get-go and now here's the more hilarious guy because one he doesn't really understand what he's talking about and two his own argument is internally logically inconsistent which is just funny um He's saying these games as a service things are getting out of hand. I don't know why he thinks subscription services are getting out of hand. Because, I mean, Bethesda's offering it, that's for sure. But I'm not hearing, you know, everybody jumping on board. I'm pretty sure EA has a similar sort of thing with their EA Plus thing. I'm not sure if it's comparable in price. It might be 20 to $30 a month, which is... Eh, kind of a tough a tough cookie to munch on, but actually, for the sake of argument, let me uh well, let me just look it up just to you know see. Okay, so I did a bit of cutting and a bit of studying because I didn't actually look into this before now. But yeah, it looks like EA offers a similar service through Origin. They have console based subscriptions as well. And um yeah, it definitely looks like a download service, which is good. It's available for $15 a month. They do offer a bit of a deal if you get a yearly, but it's $100 a year. Uh, I mean, that's a good discount if you're planning on getting it for, you know, a long period of time. Plus, they claim to have 200 games under their label, and, you know, some of them are made by third parties because, you know, EA does publishing. It doesn't do everything in-house, so I guess Ubisoft might have something like that as well. You know, Origin Access... It's been established a bit longer. Uh, it's at the same price. Um, they do give you an additional 10% discount if you do actually want to buy any of this, which is, you know, a decent bonus. But, um, yeah, I couldn't find a similar thing for Bethesda. I thought with the launcher that they had, um, you know, they released, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe a year or so, that they would have had something, you know, similar to this with for their games, but apparently it's just a launcher, so that's actually incorrect. Sorry about that. So, uh, let's get back to the this guy. So, yeah, not everyone is currently doing it. I don't know if Activision is doing it, but I kind of doubt that. But, uh, like I said, I think currently EA and Ubisoft are the big players. Nintendo is definitely not doing something like this because it's relying too much on the eShop. But I think if these things gain traction, I mean, everyone will kind of be forced to do it just because, you know, it's how people, it's how a subsection of the audience is playing their games. It's something they can tap into. And especially since it's basically, you know, an almost net profit 100% for these companies because you're not shipping anything out. You're just offering people, you know, access to code. So... Um, saying that these things are getting out of hand, I mean, that's a slippery slope argument, and it could be right, like I said, if these things gain traction. Microsoft has done a similar thing with the Game Pass, and if this, you know, happens on a console maker level, if Sony offers something like this, then, yeah, I could definitely see it being pretty popular for what you're getting, because these aren't exorbitant prices, you're getting access to a library of things, so, you know, he's saying it sounds like a good deal, it does! You should get on that, if we want to be renting our games for the rest of our lives. I mean, it's an unlimited rental. It's an unlimited download until you cancel the subscription. I mean, games to me are more finite. Like, I don't need to own every single game that I have. I mean, a lot of the games on my shelf are collecting dust. It's nice to have the option to play them again. But here's the thing. If you want to play them again, just get the subscription back and play them again. It's no big deal. You know, he's talking about store rentals. Look, the subscription rental is not comparable to a rental store. It's a subscription service. It's something that's completely unlimited as long as you keep paying for it. So, you don't have to take it back a week later. You know, you could try the game out before you decide to purchase it or not. That's exactly what you can do with this. Okay? You didn't like the game. You don't you aren't forced to play it and you're not stuck with it. And here we're getting to one of the more hilarious this is the first incorrect thing that he says he says you weren't locked into a subscription and forced to rent a new game each week one you're not locked into either of these subscriptions let me see uh what is what is the answer here 
It says you can quit at any time on Origin Access as well. You play Plus promises that you can quit any time. So, uh, yeah, you're not actually forced into anything. You pay for the subscription as long as you want to. And you aren't forced to rent a new game each week. You might as well. It's free fucking money. It's free value. These services don't allow you to rent a game. Yes, they do. This is literally the same thing. They lock you into a contract like Netflix. Even Netflix doesn't lock you into a contract, dude. <laughs> that allows you to play the game. Yeah, it's a subscription. Okay, it's a voluntary thing that you opt into in order to get access to content. But you don't get to keep it when the subscription runs out. Yeah, just like Netflix. Just like literally anything else. Okay, you don't get to keep playing fucking World of Warcraft after your subscription runs out. That's how a subscription model works. Okay, if you don't want the fucking subscription, if you don't want the temporariness of the games to bother you, then go back and pay for fucking physical. Like, what are you even talking about? This isn't an argument. It's a voluntary thing. Like, you subscribe to the service because you want to. There's not subscription exclusive games. Like, it's an option. And if you aren't trying a lot of games, it's just wasting money. Yeah, then fucking don't subscribe. If you're not planning to use it, then don't subscribe. It's like getting boat insurance and not having a boat. Like, it's not an argument as long as you're not an idiot. Another downside of the service is that all the games need installing across every platform. Yeah, then don't have fucking three subscriptions for every platform, buddy. Okay, we're talking about a PC subscription mainly. Like, EA Access is probably pretty pushing the envelope. Because it's on consoles. Not everything is going to be consoles. Honestly, it'd probably be better for them to put on consoles. Because it's just a lot easier to use it that way. I mean, this is going to be easy too. Because I'm pretty sure all you need to do is just log in and hit download on things to have them. So, again, that's not really an argument unless you're not an idiot. <laughs> a rental was fine when you could plug a cartridge or stick a disc in the drive and turn the system on. Yeah, it's a few hours. It's not a few days. Again, if you're planning to use the subscription, this isn't a problem. Now you have installed the game. Again, a few hours. Like, he's, he even said that. I I'm sorry I'm saying like so much, but this is so fucking stupid. Like, it's not an argument. It's an argument if you are literally the stupidest person on the planet who doesn't understand what a subscription is when you subscribe to something. Like I said, cancel any time, you get access to content for a flat rate that isn't completely ridiculous, you get access to the new goddamn games, and even with Origin Access, you get access to them before they fucking launch. And you get the DLC in Uplay Plus. I think they actually might give you, I think they give you a little bit of extra content in Origin Access as well, they weren't too specific on that. So, I mean, they did promise at least $20 additional content for the DLC for each game. So, I mean, that can mean so many different things. Find an answer on this. Do, 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 do. There's no more gated trials to get the full game. Access to the library. They, that's just the same thing. Oh, it is the same thing. They're comparing that. Yeah, they say extra content included with new EA games, but that doesn't say anything. Like, um, maybe they have more down here. Yeah, I guess you don't actually get everything, which is kind of lame, I guess. But, you know, whatever. Uh, especially with the example they got here, Apex Legends, you get $10 currency, you get a skin and a badge. But, uh, getting back to the point, I guess I'm kind of tired of looking at Origin Access. Um, I personally wish this trend would go away because I personally don't want to be the only way to get a game. Again, this is literally an option. Everything on these services is freely available to buy as a game. Hell, Origin Access specifically said that. Because you can do the subscription and you get the fucking discount for the purchases. So you can do both. I'd rather own a game outright. Yeah. Again, no one's forcing you to subscribe to things. It's a choice. Currently, it's a choice. I mean, things could change. And all the companies, again, it's not all the companies, are clearly trying to push this to be the norm. To do away with actual sales. Why wouldn't they? Well, why wouldn't we want them to do that? Hell, I would probably prefer this if Activision would do it. Activision has existed for over 40 years. I believe they started in the goddamn 70s. And Nintendo as well. Think about the fucking access that gives you. It's an insane amount of content that these companies have. And is freely available as long as you keep 
putting in the subscription money as long as you keep up on it. So why wouldn't we want them to do that? Then we don't have to buy everything all at the same, you know, all at different times. It's just all there. And it's freely available for your subscription. So, I mean... It, I don't know why he doesn't think this is such an attractive offer. It's $15 a month, dude. Again, he, he I think he's trying to, you know, do the slippery slope thing where he's thinking that the subscriptions are going to be forced on people. And, you know, in the far future that might happen. Maybe in five or ten years if this catches on really strong, he might be right. But right now... It's an option. Like I said, everything that's on these subscriptions are freely purchasable in other places. There's nothing exclusive here. You don't even have exclusive content. They're just giving you DLC access. It's access. It's not an exclusive. Why settle for one full game purchase cost when they can milk ten times the amount by making you pay a subscription fee each month? A one-time purchase versus a content purchase? No brainer on their part. Now, this is... A completely argumentative point. Like, this makes no sense no matter how you fucking slice it. For what you're getting for subscribing versus what you would have to pay in the real world. Like I said, he compared why settle for a full game purchase when they can milk 10 times that amount. That's 600 to $800 by making you put on a subscription plan. Even for an equal cost... That's four months subscription that you paid for to get the 60 for a purchase price on a game. And that's a shell game that doesn't have anything extra with it. They're promising extras. And e Origin Access, that has actual extras on the take. Like, I think if that was a lie at this point, people would have fucking known about it. And, you know, be like, hey, you're doing the wrong goddamn thing. So, yeah, it's not just one game. And you're not even getting just the game that you would buy if you bought it at full price right at the store. Or whatever store. Like, and some of the, like, Origin Access is giving you a yearly discount on that monthly service if you pay for the year. Like $15 a month, that's uh, $180 for the year. You save 80 bucks if you sign up for a whole, the whole year. And then be like, oh, I remember I have that Origin Access thing. Why don't I play a couple of games? Like, Origin Access has a bunch of indie games, too. I mean, you don't... That's multiple games available. Like he's saying, it's the more expensive option in comparison to purchase is not even remotely true. A one-time purchase versus a constant purchase. Again, there's, there's no lock-in contract like there is with a goddamn cable bill. If you don't, if you're not, you know, playing games on their platform, you can quit. And here's the other thing too. If you want to start up the subscription again, you also have that option. You probably can keep the same damn account too when you re-sign up. Why the hell wouldn't they make it easy? So yeah, it is a no-brainer to actually get on the subscription, okay? This guy just serves as the perfect advertisement for why this is actually compelling. And that's what I just wanted to use the whole comment for, because it makes no goddamn sense and actually makes you play plus and services that are going to come up like it, because I imagine these things are going to take off for what the value that they're adding for the fact that they're not streaming services. I'm thinking that, you know, with the game pass, with you play plus, we're definitely going to be seeing more of this later on from at least a couple other people. Hell, maybe Devolver Digital will get on it. I mean, they're a big player now that they've shown up at E3 three times. So, I don't know. Uh, I made this video basically to say that I'm in support of services like this. Because with services like this, you really can't price them like you would with, you know, base game copies. They gave you that opportunity to actually try the game out. If you're okay with not actually owning them. Which I imagine quite a lot of people are actually in favor of because of the popularity of Hulu and Netflix. Like, not a lot of people are actually concerned with consuming content and then retaining control of that content because it's a low monthly service. I mean, why the hell wouldn't you? And I know what some people are going to be saying. Oh, everybody's going to have a service like that. And then what? We have to pay $100 for access to everybody. And what I'm going to say to that is very obvious. Don't subscribe to everybody, okay? You only have time for so much. So subscribe to Uplay Plus for three months, drop it, and then go to Origin Access or maybe the hypothetical Activision one. 
and then go on to Game Pass, okay? You don't have to keep every subscription if you're not using them. Right now, I'm subscribed to this fucking newspaper. I could drop that whenever I goddamn want. And I really should because, as you know, I'm not getting anything out of that because it's the fucking news. So, yeah, I'm definitely in support. I'm compelled by the Uplay Plus thing and I might actually subscribe to it for, you know, six months or so. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit that into the budget, though. But, I mean, for what I'd be saving in comparison to, you know, buying secondhand copies, I think I might actually come out to, come out ahead on that one. Like I said, it's $15 a month. You get access to 100 games, 200 games on Origin Access at a minimum. And these things are definitely going to grow over time because there's no point not to be. I mean, this isn't like Netflix where they have to constantly shift out their library because they have thousands and thousands of movies available. This is going to be, you know, less than 1,500 games. So I can't imagine that they're going to shift things out. And like I said, Uplay Plus is currently not out. You know, the promises could be changed. It could be like, you know, the Origin Access thing where they promise extra content, but it's very vague extra content, so you don't know what you're actually getting. I'm in support of the idea of these things, and hell, I might actually subscribe for, you know, several months to them, you know, once in a while, just to get, just to get at the games that I'm temporarily interested in. But like I said, that's the joy of these subscription things. Like you can't actually lock people onto a subscription because the service itself would immediately die. I guess the other thing too would be you lose your saves. And yeah, well, then don't quit your subscription in the middle of the game. I mean, yeah, that kind of sucks that you lose your saves, but you know, keep that in mind when you're subscribing, so... I mean, it would be nice if they did the Xbox Live thing and kept everything, you know, saved for you in the cloud if you're in between subscriptions, but, you know, I'm not really sure they're going to do that, which is fine. That's definitely a fine, you know, con to this thing that I would accept. So, yeah, end of the video. I'm in support of these things, and I think that the arguments against them are kind of ridiculous. I get that if you're, you know, a, a fan of physical, I don't actually... I don't think anything bad for you for doing that, you know, go right ahead. I have plenty of physical myself, but, you know, if you're not actually concerned with owning every single game that you play, this is going to be the option for people like that. And like we saw with the, you know, explosion of Netflix, what was it like? I don't know if it was around 2004 or 2008. I don't know how late Netflix got. I think this is going to explode in the audience and especially among the casual players just because of you know, the price model and that sort of thing. Like, the ability to not actually be locked down to a purchase is going to make people actually get on these things. Especially me. I'm definitely going to get on the subscription for this sooner or later. I'm actually surprised with the fact that this was unscripted, how smoothly it went. I thought I was going to have lots of blind spots and shit like that, but I think I only got a couple edits to make. So, yeah, thanks for uh, sticking around for this video. I hope you didn't immediately dislike it. And I'll give you guys a victory for gamers for sticking around. I'll see you next time.